Everyone in here has the potential to be whatever it is you imagine. Whatever you imagine is what you can have because God places the life he has for you in your imagination. If you keep seeing yourself owning a business, if you keep seeing yourself with a summer home, if you keep seeing yourself with a big job promotion or the job of your dreams, if you see yourself with two homes, that's God putting in your imagination the future that he has for you. He places everything he has for you in your imagination. He puts it, everything you've been imagining is what God is showing you he has for you. It's just people don't understand that. Unreal things don't come into your imagination. You've never thought anything unreal because how can you think an unreal thought? If you dream of being rich, don't play that off because that's what God got for you. But now you have to pursue it. It's just the principles of success. You just gotta adhere to them because the law of attraction works. If you walk in the house, this is how it works. Whatever you put out, that's what comes in. You pick up your remote and you press the own button, you point it at the TV, guess what happened? So the law of attraction works. Whatever you emit from your remote control, the greatest remote control ever invented was your mind. Whatever you emit from that signal, that's what returns to you. That's how it works, man. This ain't no magic trick. If you want more people to smile at you, all you got to do is smile at more people. That's it. You want more people to shake your hand? All you got to do is stick your hand out in front of more people. Everybody ain't going to shake your hand, but I bet you a whole lot more people will. Because you attract that. You think rich, you be rich. You think poor, your ass is poor. You ever heard a woman say, all men are dogs? Guess what? She fit to meet all of them. You're going to meet every last one of them. You ain't even going to meet a good dude. Because that's what you attracted. That's the signal you emitted from your remote control. So when I wake up in the morning, I only have great thoughts. I'm going to have a great day. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate the day. I expect great things to happen to me. Even when something negative happened, all I got to do is wait it out. Behind mo every moment of adversity, there's a lesson and a blessing. All you got to do is ride it out. It's going to be tomorrow. And as long as you wake up, whatever happened yesterday, that's in the past. I'm telling you, man, all you got to do is think. If you think different, you be different. That's the trick. I ain't smarter than nobody in here. I just think a little bit different. I think big thoughts. I want to ask God for little stuff. I don't even waste his time with little stuff. I want to ask God for no couple hundred dollars. Lord, I need another zero on my check. I don't even ask for zeros. I ask for commas. I want another comma. But now, if you want a zero, just ask for the zero. That's just a thought, y'all. That's just a thought. Come on, let's go. I went to Robert Smith's house and tell you this quick story. The billionaire. And the story is you got 30 minutes. No one gets more than 30 minutes of his time, period. I was told that. I done got a jet on a flew to Austin to his house. Cool, for 30 minutes, man. Do you know how bad I wanted to sit with this man to get a jet and go somewhere for 30 minute meeting? I was at Robert Smith's house for seven hours. Wow. Mm. I was leaving his house and I asked his, the lady who runs it, I said, can I ask you a question? I said, I was expecting to leave in 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I said, why was I in this man's house for seven hours? She said, you know why, Steve? She said, because you're the first person that sat with him for 20 minutes and ain't asking for no money. Mm. The biggest thing Robert Smith taught me was to scale up. Everything you say, Steve, scale it. You want to bring 300 boys to your ranch? How do you bring 3,000 to your ranch? You bring 3,000, how do you bring 30,000? You want to change 30,000 lives? How do you change 300,000 lives? He taught me that valuable lesson. And me and Robert Smith, we've been friends ever since, man. And when he gave that money to Morehouse and paid off all them loans, do you know he meets with them brothers once a month? He meets with them once a month. I was on the yacht for my birthday. He called me and said, Steve, need you to join this call with me on Thursday night. Man, ain't no problem. On, got, got on the lunch with him and sat in, got in on the Zoom call with him. 
He had about 40, 50 of them cats on the line, set on line. And all I did was give them information about the mindset you have to have for success. You got to get your mind wrapped around this thing, man. If you don't get this here, you got to have successful thoughts. Everything I think is big and everything I try to think is positive. Now I'm human. I have my days, you know, when I have doubts and I'm, I'm human. But right after that, whenever I think something ain't working, I do two things. I start thinking of, I get grateful and I immediately go into prayer. I get grateful and then I just say, okay, God, I thank you for what all you've done for me. Let me just shut up and cool out. And then I go into prayer. And, and, and dog, what I have now is because of that. It's not because like I'm the funniest cat out there. You know, somebody asked me one time, you think you that funny? I don't know. I know enough people do. I got about, I got hundred million people willing to give me a dollar. I made a few hundred million. Now, you might not think I'm funny, but I don't really need you to make it, though, do I? <laughs> a There's fact. a whole lot of people hating on y'all, but you don't need that one of them. That's a fact. You know, the fact that I ain't never heard now one of Lil Baby's records. I wouldn't know a Lil Baby song. He don't need me. <laughs> ASAP Rocky. He, don't, he got Rihanna. What do he need me for? <laughs> Everything you want from God, it has to be written. It's a principle of success. It's a law. It's not a theory that Oprah came up with for 30 years telling you about vision board. Oprah didn't come up with this. You know, Michelle Obama didn't come up with it. This is nothing Steve Harvey came up with. If you have something in your life that you're trying to acquire or you won't, and you don't have it written down, you have now reduced the chances of you getting it by 80%, because it's a principle of success. It's in your Bible. You see, the Bible is full of all the principles you need. It tells you everything you need to do. So here it is. There's a scripture. It's in Habakkuk. It's Habakkuk 2 and 2. This scripture says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it will run to it. And even though it tarry, tarry means take a while. And even though it tarry, wait for it. For surely it will come at an appointed time. That's a fact. It's not a theory. It's a fact. I dare you. I dare you to go home and write down everything you want on paper. Read it every morning and every night. I dare you. In one year, I want you to pull that paper off and check, put a check mark by everything you've accumulated on that list. You'll be stunned. You will be absolutely stunned. It don't matter if you don't believe in it. It don't matter if you've ever heard of it. It don't matter if you think it's hocus pocus. I dare you to try it. This ain't, this ain't Steve. This ain't your Bible. This ain't the same one you got. It ain't in the rich people's Bible. It's in yours, man. If you do that one simple thing, you obey, you obey that one law he created. It changes your life forever. How you think rich people get where they at? How you think I got here? You, you think I'm smarter than you? Because I'm not. I ain't got no education. You think, you think what? You think what? Because I done flunked out of everything I've ever been in. I, I've lost more times than all of you. I come out the dirt. I lived in my car for three years. I've been a, in a car for three years. You ain't done that one. You ain't been in jail. You ain't been locked up. You ain't been, you ain't been shot. You ain't been, you ain't, what else? Let me go to you. You probably ain't on your third marriage. You probably ain't lost everything you ever owned twice. Yeah, I'm just saying you probably, you could have, but you probably ain't. So how did I get here? Because I learned the principles of success. I just started writing stuff down. That's how I got here. I'm not smarter than you. God don't love me more than he loves you. I'm the same child of God you are. But what I got, though, I got a lot of common sense. 
I figured since I wasn't smart in school, and I figured since I, I ain't had no money, I said, well, I got to get rich some kind of way. Maybe if I ask God, could I be rich? See, most people don't have what they want because they ain't never asked God for it. If you've been trying to figure it out yourself, that's probably it. I just messed around and asked him, could I be rich? Because guess what? I was tired of being poor. I was homeless. What, how much more poor I need to be? Let me try rich. I'm tired. Poe was wearing me out. I don't know how you handling it, but it was exhausting for me. Wrote it down. Now, I didn't always appreciate the route that God took. I thought there was a quicker way I could have got here. Like the whole Miss Universe thing. What we could have did without that. <laughs> I, but I'm gonna, tell you, I'm gonna tell you the story behind that. You know, I had been praying to God in 2015 to increase my global brand and persona. I wanted to go global. I wanted to get out of the United States. I wanted to become global. And that was my prayer. I became the biggest idiot ever in the history of television. But guess what happened? 48 hours later, I was the most Googled person in 10 years. Steve Harvey's name had been Googled 4 billion impressions, 4 billion in 48 hours. I was the most globally famous person on planet Earth. I did not like the route. I thought God was very unfair. But he gave me what I asked for. It was just the route that he took me. I did not understand it. But lo and behold, little did I know, 13 countries have given me and my wife villas all over the world. We can go to 13 countries and vacation anytime we want to because of my act of honesty. And then two months later after that, I got the biggest Super Bowl commercial I ever got T-Mobile, I announced the wrong name on T-Mobile. They paid me more money for one commercial than I had made on all commercials I'd ever done. That's how God works. You just gotta, you just gotta go with him sometime. My global brand and persona. <laughs> but boy, I was looking at God like, you gotta be kidding me. And now, look, man, I'm in Africa, I'm in Abu Dhabi, I'm in Dubai, I'm in London, I'm in the Maldives, I do business, all because of that one huge mistake. But God, God can take anything you do. All things work for good for them that love the Lord, and I show sure love him. I tell my kids all the time, experience is priceless, man. It's a shame you got to pay for it with your youth. I tell them that all the time, man. Because, you know, my kids, they grew up there in the Google age, right? So they think because they can Google they think they know And I be telling them all the time, it's a lot of you can't Google. Dad, you can Google anything. No, you can't. So they challenged me the other day. They said, Dad, name two things you can't Google. I said, you ready? I said, yeah. I said, Google, Google success. Go Google it. Google it. Go Google success. Now, go be it. Just do what the is. You can't Google success. And you can't Google experience. You got to live in this world to get experience. You can't Google experience. Them two things. Then they got quiet. Well, them the only two things. Well, two big ass things. Now, trying to be successful and trying to gain experience. It's two huge things. And one without the other, you in trouble. If you don't ever become successful at something, you in trouble. And if you don't ever get experienced at something, you in mo trouble, you know. This is the perfect show for me. I get to meet people like this, people like this. I discover stuff about people. We have fun. We get little rhythms going with the families. It's, we, it's laughing. Everybody at home can play along. Your answers at the house as good as the answers up here. That's what makes a game fun.
Whenever I get in a dark place, and I, I get into myself, I'm human, you know, I'm not Superman. It's, it's hard. Life is very hard. When you get in a dark place, what you should do is, when you start feeling bad or you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, the thing that, that fixes it right away is just start reminding yourself. Go down the list of everything that you can think of that you could be grateful for. Gratitude erases depression immediately. See, the way to get rid of darkness is with light. You can't kill darkness with more dark. You gotta strike a match on one of these things. If you show gratitude, it immediately erases. Now, I was having a tough morning the other morning and then I just started thinking about all the stuff God had done for me. And man, oh man, oh man, I mean, it kinda helps. It don't kind of help, it eradicates. Because you have to remember something, man. Uh, joy and depression cannot reside in the same space. You, you, you can't be depressed and full of joy at the same time. Gratitude produces joy inside of you. And everybody has it, because I don't care who you are and what you're going through or what you got, you got something to be grateful for. There's not a person in here that ain't got nothing they can't be grateful for. Hell, you here. How about let's just start there. How about you walked in here? How about you got a mask on? You ain't got corona. You survived the pandemic last year. You here. I mean, man, it's so much. Your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. For me, it was comedy. So once you identify it, then that's, that's the beginning of it. But there's a lot of work to do even after you identify your gift. You know, you can believe you're something all you want, but if you don't work towards it, you, you're just sitting there, it's gonna be empty. And so, that takes me to page 159 in my book, chapter 12. It was called Tale of the Tape. Now this goes back, so I used to do a little boxing uh, a while back, and the Tale of the Tape was interesting because it was an analysis of each boxer's physical stats. That's, again, about assessing strengths and weaknesses. And in the book is what we all need to do on our path to success. We need to make a tale of tape of ourselves. You gotta have an honest assessment of who you are. You gotta determine your strengths and weaknesses. You can't give your best if you don't know what your best is. You also need some outside perspective. If you listen to people that's close to you, that have your best interests outside, you can use these outside observers to gain knowledge to assess yourself. And when you reach out to get these outside opinions, be open, keep your emotions in check. But you can't say that, but just keep your emotions in check. Now from there, you're gonna have a good feel about what your strengths and weaknesses are, and you can work on them to build them. You talk about managing your strengths. I know one of my weak points in my personal life is I don't like technical stuff. So even though I have to be on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, I don't care for that. So guess what? I find somebody who loves to do that. You know, I find somebody who has a strength where I have a weakness and I partner with them. All you're trying to do is get to the goal. No one gets there by themselves. Everybody needs help. Now, when you know what you got going for you, be confident, not cocky. Managing your strengths, knowing what they are, and don't let nobody talk you out of it. And that gets you fight ready. You get fight ready like that. You got to know you. Helps you develop your skills. All the while, you're developing your strength. It's, it's not, it, you just gotta keep developing the strength. Don't let anybody talk you up. At the same time, you must work on improving your weaknesses. So I've had to, in spite of myself, get on Instagram, get on Twitter, get on Facebook. I gotta do the videos, whether I want to or not, because the world is moving to social media. If I had as many followers as Kim Kardashian, I probably wouldn't even have to do this TV show. <laughs> also, one last thing, everybody. After you improve your weaknesses, protect your vulnerabilities. Stop telling people what's wrong with you because some people will take that information and use it to their advantage. You use it to their advantage. Don't tell them. I mean, in the beginning, I took everything, man. I was grinding, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to get here. I took everything. I think that's the part that young people don't get. Like, I talked to a lot of young acts today. I ain't doing that, that didn't pay enough. 
Did you hear what you said? You said it don't pay enough, but it pays. If you don't take the gig, you're going to get zero. Well, no, 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 no. I want this. They only pay. I said, how much do you want? I wanted 5000 for the night. How much they offer? 3500 Yo, yo, dog, what, what, what else do you have that you can get somebody to give you 3500 for the night? Go tell your jokes. Now, nah, man, they got to pay me what I want. But see, now you're not honing your craft and you're not making money. He said, would you have took it for 3500 I said, yeah. He said, would you take it for 3500 now? I said, no. But why would you won't take it now, but you want me to take it? You don't have what I have. Well, what are we talking about? Just inch by inch, anything's a cinch. You got to take steps, man. It's hard to get young people to understand that. I want what you got now. You can't have what I got now. Yeah, I tell my kids all the time, me and my kids, we have this discussion. It take a long time to make a lot of money. If you think you're just going to make a lot of money real fast, you're going to be constantly disappointed. It takes a long time to make money. I've been in this business since I was 27 years old. I'm 64. Oh, man, come on. Yeah. Look at what your life. Well, you, you're looking at now. You missed the three years I was living in a car. You, you didn't see that. You missed when I lost everything I ever owned twice. You missed the two divorces. You missed me flunking out of school. You missed all that. You see this now. This ain't how it work now. Yeah, oh, it look easy. Yeah, I'll make it look easy. This is hard. Come out here. Go, come turn this corner. I'm going to invite any one of y'all to come up here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Family Feud. Here's Ricky. <laughs> and Ricky, walk your ass around this corner and just do what I do. It's really hard. Like, what do you do for a living? Software startup. See, if I went to her job, I'm a failure. What do I know about software? No, what do you do, sir? Physician. A physician? Oh, <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> He's a physician. He went to school. He got to go to regular school. Then he got to go to another school. Then he got to get certified, go to another school. That's not me. I can want to be a doctor all I want, but it, it ain't me. It's just easy, man. You got, you got to fit in. You got to, you got to do the gift God gave you. You're a physician. You're gifted. That's a God-given gift. Everybody can't go be a doctor. All right, family. It's not for you. Clear it up. Somebody said, Steve, you ought to be a minister. What? I love the Lord. I really do. God is my friend. He's the whole reason I'm here. I'm not a minister, though. I minister, but I'm not a minister.